thanks so much. Super excited to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm giving yet another talk about state management today, but bear with me. It's not yet another Redux. It's a bit different, and if anything, I don't actually want to share like a new NPM library with you today, but it's more of like a different way of thinking about state management, and particularly how it relates to user experience. So, and the first part of my talk will be more about local first, the second part more in the nitty gritty. So, I'm Johannes Schickling, I'm based in Berlin. In the past, I've been the founder of Prisma, uh, where I was also thinking about state management uh, more on the server side. And nowadays, I do, uh, I build an actual app uh, similar to the story that Charlie shared today. I'm also like a developer who's building an app, trying to build an, a cross platform app. So feeling right at home here. I also do a bit of open source consulting. And the project I want to present today, I've been collaborating on with my friend Jeffrey Litt, who's doing about the same project, actually his uh, PhD at MIT. So uh, some, some really great thoughts have gone into this. So the app I'm building, don't want to go too much into detail here, but just in case someone is interested, and that's been the motivating foundation for, for all of my learnings and, and thoughts, is I'm building a new music app. Uh, like it's, I call it a mu universal music app because it should integrate Spotify, YouTube, Bandcamp, wherever the music lives these days. Um, yeah, it's hopefully going to be available later this year. But uh, this has been the, the, the ground for, for all of my thinking and, and learning on, in regards to state management lately. So as mentioned, in this talk, I want to, in the first half, present a new architecture, or maybe new to some of you, called local first. It's a bit of a different paradigm as like an antidote to everything being cloud these days. And in the second half, I want to share my approach to how I've built a local state management um, solution, uh, particularly with local, local first in mind. So why local first? I want to walk you through like kind of like an anecdote that I've gone through like a bunch of times when I've built an app, and maybe this seems familiar to you. So let's say we build an app. Let's say we do it either by ourselves or like in a, in a small team. And we, we maybe go with like a typical three-tier architecture. So we build a React app, maybe a React Native app. On the server, we're using an API server, maybe a REST server, maybe a GraphQL server, and a database. Typical three-tier architecture. And so we develop it, we develop it locally, we roll it out to our next data center. It's like working pretty OK. But then as we get actual users, uh, turns out the app is pretty slow. Maybe they don't live right next to the data center. Maybe they don't have like perfect network connectivity. So what do we do as developers? Right, we add caching and we add optimistic updates. So it's like ruins the simplicity of our app a little bit, but it's for a good cause. So we make the app faster again. Users are happy again, okay. So a little bit further down the road, since we're building a mobile app as well, like it turns out you take your mobile phone like downstairs where you don't have any connectivity at all, and the app breaks because it doesn't work offline. So what do we do? Well, I guess in most cases, we do more of the same, which is more caching and more optimistic updates. And actually, this was not scripted. This was about poor connectivity. But uh, this actually made my point, my point perfectly. Like, our technology is pretty useless without internet. Um, so yeah, but back to the flow. How, what do we do? Actually, the solution here would have been similar, more caching or a different architecture, which I'm getting to in a second. Um, but here, in this case, with this app, we typically add more caching, more optimistic updates when we're doing writes, and so on. It's like, it fixes the, the problem for, for the user but it comes at a big cost for, for us as developers. And then let's say we want to go a step further even, and we really want to like, improve the user experience. Let's say we have like, some collaborative aspects in our, in our app. Let's, let's think about something like Notion, where you can collaborate on, on the same text, et cetera. So as we want to add that, now we not suddenly need to coordinate this. And so this might work fine for one user editing something, but if another user tries to edit the same document, our, approach, our typical data management approach starts to break down. And we need a different so, uh, solution to this, uh, which maybe we aim for something like CRDTs to, to do syncing. But 
as a developer, all of this came at an insane cost. Like we've now racked up so much technical debt in our in our code base, and I would say state management is the it's the origin of, of all of this problem. So like our state management has gotten like super complex. We have to deal with cache invalidation problems left and right. Uh, we have inconsistency due to optimistic updates if they go wrong. And on top of all of that, now we've tried to like retrofit the stata syncing flow, and this does not fit our original ar architecture at all. And so as an alternative idea to, to all of this, this is where like a new architecture is emerging. And so as a foundation, I want to share two observations here with you. One, the problem, the original, the originating problem of all of this is actually that we have two kinds of state. We have the state in our app and we have the state on our server. And that state by nature is distributed. And all of our problems that we've dis discussed here is about that state being distributed. So like a distributed systems problem. So that's observation one, and that's really the root of most evil. <laughs> and the observation number two is, as we've introduced the first little cache in our app, we've actually, that cache grew and grew and grew, and actually looks and it's like, talks a little bit like a database. So I want to share an approach with you where we could actually embrace that. And just to, to drive home this point, um, I found this, this really interesting blog post where Tristan writes, when I've worked on any kind of distributed systems, including systems as simple as a web app with front-end and back-end code, probably upwards of 80% of my time is spent on things I wouldn't need to do if things weren't distributed. This is really, like, to my previous point, like, we have the state in the local app and we have the, st the state in the server. If we find a different solution to this, we could probably massively reduce the, the time we spend on like not building features. So yeah, and that approach is, as I initially mentioned, local first. Local first was coined in a research lab uh, called Ink and Switch. I'll share the, the blog post in a second. And the core idea is to embrace that database that we have typically in most of our apps anyway. So we just embrace that and really try to like leverage that for most for like all of our queries and state management locally. And we try to push out the state management, the distributed state management problem a bit into like an intentional syncing problem. And so and those are like pretty well explored. And if we don't if we put those ideas together, that's kind of like what local first is, is all about. So as mentioned, Ink and Switch was, uh, I think, is, is kind of like has always been there, but more like as a concrete, intentional idea, was coined at a research lab called Ink and Switch. Uh, can highly recommend everyone who's interested in reading this blog post. Highly inspirational and informative. So quickly want to motivate a few benefits of, of Local First. I think it's a win-win for both users and developers. Uh, for users, I think kind of the ultimate feature is that it's fast. Local first makes it so much easier to build fast apps. It's always available, uh, as opposed to my slides earlier, uh, even with poor and uh, like no connectivity at all. Um, the apps are have much better longevity. So like most SaaS software, where like a SaaS service has shut down, like you can't use that anymore. You can't access your data anymore. Whereas like Amazon DOS software still works rock solid. Like, why, why have we lost this? Local first brings us back. Um, it's much easier to build collaborative apps, uh, such as apps like Figma or Linear or Notion uh, with local first. And it's also much more respectful of the user's privacy. But all of that is not just like better for the user, but much harder for the developer. But it argue actually much easier for, for the developer it's, um, as well. So for developers, it makes for a much easier, much simpler architecture. Um, it solves the distributed systems, or it doesn't solve it, but it puts us aside and lets you focus intentionally on the distributed system problem, and importantly, lets other smart people Talk, uh, like deal with the distributed systems problem much smarter than me, and I can vo focus on my app. And um, yeah, it's overall, I can now say, with having done that for two years, it's much easier to develop, test, and debug in, in such a data paradigm. The developer experience is just great. So this is kind of like a quick 
uh, recap here of like what I think are the benefits of, of local first. But in the second part now, I want to share like the, the how, like how have I done local first state management? And I want to focus here, um, there, there would be a lot to cover. This would be like many, many talks. Uh, but I don't, I don't have enough time today to talk about syncing, for example, using CRDTs. I don't have time talking about versioning or migrations. These are all interesting problems or integrating with other APIs. I don't, we don't have too much time today, but I want to focus particularly on the local state management part. And I want to yeah, share my thoughts, findings with you today. So as a starting point for local state management, this might be as, as simple as it gets using a simple use state React hook. So that as a starting point, we started to explore, hey, what are the characteristics and the design goals we'd want for, for the app that we're building to make the right thing easy to like, build a great user app? So the design goals that we've come up with, I'll walk you through them like in greater depth in a second, is that the state management should allow me to easily persist all the data that, that I have. Um, it should be reactive, as we're at a React conference. The data should be reactive as well. It should allow me to express transactional boundaries very easily, and it should be super fast. So what do I mean by persistent? The goal here is that like whatever I'm doing in the app, like whether it's navigating, filling out forms, et cetera, and something, in case something catastrophic happens, or like if you're in a web app and you reload the app, and uh, like all, all the stuff you've put into the for, like let's say a government or insurance form, if all of that is gone, that's, that's a nightmare. So the most state should be persistent by default. That's better for users, uh, like avoids data loss and just makes for much better developer, um, much better user experience overall. But it's also great for developers because it's much easier. If all state is persistent, it's much easier to, uh, to reproduce like hairy uh, debugging situations. Yeah, so that's, that's a key characteristic I want. But it's kind of tricky to do right. Uh, you might need to think about data serialization, migrating that data, and there might also be an overhead of like now persisting that data to something like index to be or, or something else. So that's persistence. I want my data to be reactive so that when any data changes in my app, that it updates the corresponding React components. And it should do so in like the, it should not drop like any data changes, so it should always update a React component if something has changed, but also as minimal as possible that is like efficient. And then it also needs to be trans gives me transactional consistency. So in a music app, for example, as uh, where it's a lot about playing music, let's say you play a track um, and you play another track, now you want the, the state to be all updated. You don't want like your one play button to still show pause or like the, the wrong track. If you change something, everything should change at once that it's consistent. And, but yeah, that is kind of tricky to pull off because you now need to track the dependencies of your data across the entire app. You might want to batch changes together and to express all of that in a nice and ergonomic API has proven quite challenging. And last but not least, I want all of this to be fast. I want to build an app that's like ideally like 60 FPS, 100 FPS, like however fast our, our screen is. And whenever a user interacts with the app, it should be reflected ideally in the, in the next frame. So that leaves very little breathing room for like, the, how, how much time the state management aspect has. And if we're using a database, that puts incredible pressure on the performance characteristics of the database. But that's also like a super important requirement for, for my flavor of state management. So we've been exploring that. And just to give you an idea, like. As we're building a music app, this kind of like the more the status quo, where you have uh, like Spotify, and just notice uh, as you're clicking between playlists, there like they were all open before locally, so all the data should be there. And just to drive home, like like look at for all of like those loading spinners, etc. Like this is all data that should be there instantly. And uh, the next slide, I want to share like an early prototype that we've built uh, for Overtone. This is like you click on a playlist and the next frame, like your entire data is there. This is like what you can get 
with, with local first. So that's the kind of that's the kind of speed. So, but speaking of like loading spinners, etc., like we've been at a point where we've like been, how can we like do we need these loading spinners if we have the data, etc.? Could we like this was really like introducing so much complexity in our app that all like the the queries are asynchronous and we have like this loading state. So we've been wondering, could we get rid of this somehow? Like this is a typical like like use query hook, you could implement this however you want or use an existing one, but that's kind of like at the gist, that's what it is. You have like a loading state, you have the actual state, and then in your app, you need to kind of like switch over, hey, is it loading, then show like a skeleton, and like if it's not loading, then like actually now finally we can, we can render my component. And it's even worse if you have like multiple things that are loading and now you need to coordinate all of this. So if we'd, we've been really wondering, hey, could we, do without that? Could we get rid of like this asynchronous part? And this is kind of like the secret sauce of our state management approach that we've been, um, yeah, that, that we've been thinking about. And frankly, this was like kind of a tough battle uh, for like two years. We've been like going back and forth. Hey, does this even make sense? Can we even pull it off or not? But this was at least like a bold initial goal initially, and I'm I'm pretty excited to share that uh, it seems to be working out. So the goal is like to drop uh, the async away, drop the loading states. Um, this massively simplifies your your application code. Um, it makes for the best possible performance and, and user experience this way. But yeah, given that you do these synchronously, this also puts like real requirements on what needs to happen within that typically the UI thread. Uh, like that needs to be just crazy fast, and that's kind of been like one of the main challenges for for what we've been exploring. But yeah, one takeaway here maybe for you as a, as a, that I could suggest is like if you have the option to make an API synchronous as as opposed to asynchronous, uh, I think that can be massive benefits that I did not appreciate in the past. So what about existing solutions? As Yanni mentioned, yet another state management talk. There's a bunch of like state management tools out there in, historically, and I think they all like are great for their time where they came to be and are still great in many circumstances. But none of those solutions really addressed all of our goals that, that we, we set out for ourselves. So, and that's why we've built our own. And so we've built kind of like, we built a technology called Riffle and are now integrating that with another technology called SKDB. SKDB is built by a bunch of like brilliant ex-Facebook people. It's built in a program language called Skiplang, uh, runs in Wasm, runs natively, and it's, you can think about it as like a smarter SQLite that you can add, embed in your database, uh, in, in your actual application. And Riffle is the, the glue between React and a database like SKDB, and that's what we've been kind of incubating over, over the last two years. So I want to show you a quick demo. Um, so this is the uh, to-do MVC app, uh, as, as we've seen it probably a bunch of times before, and so I can uh, do the talk, have internet, and do demo. So I'm doing the demo, I have internet, and notice uh, this all, first of all, works. This is like with an actual like SKDB database running in Wasm. This is a web app, but the same applies also for, for uh, React Native. Um, I can filter this, like filter by the active ones, filter by the completed ones. Uh, thus, everything updates. And just to, to illustrate this a bit more, we've integrated this little, uh, this little debugger tool here where you can see the, the different tables. So here we see the to-do table, here we see the UI state table. As I've been writing something here, hello, this would be updated right away here. So, and this is, this is all just like SQL running. So here I see like the visible to-dos, just says select star from to-dos. Uh, if I'm like filtering this, the query will be updated, the data will be updated. It's just SQL, but like in a reactive way. So yeah, this was a little demo. I just want to uh, briefly explain how this is kind of working on a, on a code level. 
Uh, everything in the database typically starts with a schema. So you can express a schema here. You can also express actions. This is where you would change some of your data. You would then take that schema and provide it to your React app on sort of like a root level. And um, yeah, then you're, then you're ready to go. And you can do, you can do queries here. You can uh, actually like make changes, like add a to-do, update something. And that's basically all there is to it. With, and all of this has the, the uh, fulfills the goals that we had before. It's like super fast, persistence, all transactional. And this is all like synchronous. There is no loading state here. So yeah, this is, um, that's Riffle, just another, uh, another visualization of this where you have your, your components, your, your SQL queries, and how it like composes all the way up from, from your, from your um, tables. So who is excited to, to give this a try? <laughs> so this is awkward. Uh, I have some bad news for you. Uh, this is not yet available. Those are mostly just like internal projects, but this will there will be progress, and we're like writing about it. There is some like there are some essays uh, that, that you can read about this. SKDB is going to be probably announced like and, and publicly available in the coming months as well. And if you're really keen on somehow still giving this a try yourself, please get in touch with me. In the meanwhile, there's also great alternative technologies such as Vulkan, Electric SQL, and, and others. So this is really just one technology as part of this broader spectrum of like local first. Um, but please, by all means, get in touch with me if you're, if you're curious to learn more about this. I'm also, like, uh, I think, up for questions there, uh, tomorrow. So if, you, if you're interested, uh, approach me and happy to chat more about this. So yeah, what I want to leave you with today is please give like local first, uh, local first architecture a try when you're like building a new app or as you're facing some of the problems that I've that I've mentioned earlier. I think is like it's it's probably not the end all be all for like all apps, but for a large number number of apps, I think is makes for a really better foundation that's better for users and better for developers. And as you're thinking about like state management, particularly local state management, yeah, those are the design principles that we've kind of like worked our way up to over the last two years that seem to work really, really well for our app. And so maybe this can be an inspiration for you as well. So with that, thank you so much for your time.